This is a bedrock hand plane, a smoother, made by Soba Industries. This particular plane is a prototype that was given to me for testing. Uh, they probably come up with a production model sometime later on. But let's see what's special about this plane and how we can get it to work properly as it's meant to be. Agnay Chutani is the CEO of Soba Industries. I asked him why he chose to develop a bedrock plane. This is a bedrock style plane. Uh, it has a fully machined frog. Rather than the one that you have already been using, it's, uh, those things are mostly belly type. The ones that are made in India. So bedrock has a different kind of a frog. It was uh, an improvement over the baby design. And uh, well, uh, it's far more superior. Why did you decide to make this plane? Well, because there are only a few people in the world who are actually making bedrock planes. Who are these? Uh, they're Lee Nelson, Veritas, Wood River. And they're very expensive. They're very, very expensive. So you don't want to buy a $350 plane and, uh, well, uh, if you're buying a $350 plane, you probably are going to put it in a shelf, not use it. You want a plane that is usable and it is economical. In order to produce a good but economical bedrock plane, Agne Chuttani has had to do a lot of research as well as considerable trial and error. But in the end, he's got there and has come up with a very fine bedrock plane. This is a bedrock plane and this is a normal Bailey type plane. In this case, this one is made by Stanley. So let's see how it differs. As we can see, the blade is pretty much the same, pretty similar in both the planes. And so are the lever caps, they're exactly, they're identical. What is different, however, are the frogs. This is the frog of a bedrock plane and this of a Bailey type plane. So let's take a look at this Bailey type plane. You can see that this is the bed on which the frog rests. It has a number of contact points and you have the frog uh, base machined in this fashion and this frog comes and sits on this and as you can see there's a little bit of play but on the better ones, I believe, there's very little play. But at any rate, this is how it works. These contact points and this uh, frog. So that's the Bailey type plane. And most planes in India are of this kind. And this, on the other hand, is the bedrock plane. As you can see, the bed is absolutely flat. It's machine flat, unlike this one with its contact points, multiple contact points. Here there's only one flat wide contact point. Similarly the frog also has a machined back and it's absolutely flat, has to be ground very precisely so that it will sit on this without moving at all. As you can see there's no lateral movement at all, it's solid, uh, it's pretty steady and that's apparently the advantage of these bedrock planes. These two go in and into them you have these screws from the back going in laterally to fix the whole thing together. And then you have another screw over here which controls the back and forth movement of the frog. It's really quite simple and ingenious. So does the design of the frog make that much of a difference? 
in my view, a regular Bailey type plane, if tuned properly and the blade sharpened nicely, is an excellent tool. It'll do anything that you want it to do and as good as any other kind of plane. Well, that's my view. Some say that the bedrock plane with its flat frog, well machine frog, is superior because there's less chatter. In my view, that's not really the case. And uh, while this is a beautiful little plane, the Bailey type planes are as good. A major problem was the blade. It had been ground badly. In order to properly hone a blade, the back has to be flattened perfectly. In this case, I found a large hollow that took hours to level. In the end, the tip remained low, which is far from ideal. Among the many small problems with this plane is this rattly handle. I've tried everything trying to tighten this, but it just doesn't work. So you have this absolutely annoying feature over here, which I don't know how to fix. The one other thing that you need to check in every hand plane is the flatness of the sole. The flatter the sole, the better performance you're going to get from a hand plane. So in this case too, we've got to check to see how flat this, uh, uh, this sole is. And one way to do it is with the use of a, what is known as the feeler gauge. So you have these gauges with these leaves of different thickness which you can use for checking. And in this case I have a metric gauge and the thinnest uh, leaf that I have is 0.04 mm. So let's use this to see how flat this sole is. Not so much here. On this side, it's feeder gauge can't get in. We can conclude that the sole of this plane is pretty flat and we don't really have to do anything to it and it's ground pretty well. wood to play. It's got these grains coming out of the wood like this and often you have pretty horrible tear out while planing so peely. But I must say this one has turned out pretty well as you can see. It's absolutely smooth. No trouble at all. No tear out. And uh, in all I'm rather pleased. I must say this plane is not bad at all. So what do I think about this Sova Industries Bedrock number no. 4? I think it's a good little plane and Sova Industries have got it right. They've got the design right, they've got the engineering right. Except this plane does have a few problems. The plate definitely is one big problem area which they've got to look into. Then you have little things like this uh, blade adjustment screw which is really hard and uh, pretty awful to turn and then you have a problem with the handle which requires tweaking to fix properly without which you can't really use this plane so there are a few glitches but i'm sure that uh, before Sova industries gets it to production stage they will fix these glitches and once they do that they're sure to have a big up.